hello everyone welcome to mind spine education today in this video we are going to see following topics we this is third lecture in this series of calculation optimization and we are covering currently uh, functions of single variable so this is third lecture in function of single variable so let's start in this video we are going to see first inverse function inverse function and then uh, we will understand what inverse function means and how we calculate inverse of a function and then we will see some practice problem practice problem on topics that we have already covered up till now so first i will recommend you to see first two video then you will be able to correlate properly in this video so first go to part 1 and part 2 of this function of single variable in this playlist and watch it then come back and watch this one so let's start with inverse function inverse function so what it means is inverse as the word suggest inverse of a function is sorry yeah inverse of a function is opposite of that function as the word inverse means opposite what it does is let's say let's see suppose we have a function f which is going from a to b i have already uh, explained what this symbol means this is domain of the function that is input of the function and this is all possible outputs of the function so when we say f a to b so we get a function like this suppose this is set a and this is set b and we have one Two, three in set A and A, B, C in set B, and a function mapping is there f, which which is getting mapped like this. A one is going to A, two is mapped to B, three is mapped to C, like this. Then inverse of function will be defined like this. This will be A and this will be B. And just function will get reversed. One, two, three. A, B, C, and it will become like this. A will go to one now. B will go to two, and C will go to three. So how we say this? F inverse become became like this. F B is going to A now. So B is going to A. Right. So what happens when we calculate inverse of a function we basically we are reversing the input and output of the function if you remember i had told you that a function is like a machine a grinding machine i have explained what is grinding machine and how we correlate this with function in this grinding machine we put some input like wheat and we get output wheat flour but inverse up, uh, reverses this machine this machine become like this now now we are putting wheat flour flour and output we are getting wheat this is essentially what an inverse does with a function so if this is f then this is f inverse this is a grinding machine like this so essentially inverse does what it does is it reverses input and output nature of the function so input becomes output and output becomes input of the function now certain property will come in picture when we can properly define this input and output for a function and its inverse so let's see what are those properties first 
टू एफ इनवर्स सॉरी लेट्स राइट लाइक दिस टू लेट्स राइट लाइक दिस फोर एफ इनवर्स टू एग्जिस्ट एफ मस्ट बी बाइजेक्टिव लेट्स सी वाई when we said function gets reverse one is going to a now first one is going to a in f two is going to b and in f inverse let's say this is a and b in f inverse now a is going to one and b is going to two this is f inverse so this will be properly defined only when the mapping is 1 1 and on 2 let's see if it it was not 1 1 then what will happen if it was not 1 1 that means 2 was also going to a and 1 was also going to a that that's what many 2 1 means so if it it was like this then in inverse it will become a is going to two places 1 and 2 but uh, i explained to you in the first lecture that this is not a function when two arrow arising from single element then that is not a proper definition of the function all element should have an arrow a starting arrow uh, but no element can have two arrows are starting from it then it won't be a function so if it is not one 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 then this kind of situation will arise and it inverse won't be a function so inverse will not exist so, uh, secondly when it is not uh, on to function then there is a element there is an element in b which is not getting targeted by any element from a so when we do the inverse then this will become domain for inverse this will become domain in domain since no element uh, were targeting this c so c will not target any element to a so c becomes an element that does not have any arrow and it it is part of domain now for f inverse it is part of domain so this is also not proper definition of function for function to exist all elements should have an arrow all each element should have an arrow and no element can have two arrows more than one arrows right no element should be left undefined like in this case c becomes undefined uh, when we put f inverse c we don't know what will be output because no no mapping exist for c so this situation will arise when function is uh, not on to so for inverse to exist function function should be both one to one and on to when the, these two conditions satisfy we call that kind of function as bijective function both injective and surjective this is also called injective and this is called surjective when both injective and surjective we call that kind of function as bijective function so inverse to for in inverse to exist function must be bijective f and inverse of f will also be bijective because in if we are able to calculate inverse of f then we do inverse again of f inverse then we will get f itself so to that kind of properties to exist we should have both f and f inverse as bijective functions now second property let's see let's say uh, let's see let g is inverse of f that is f inverse equal to g these are two functions f and g and g is inverse of f then f of g will be equal to g of 
of f and it will be equal to x. So, what it is trying to say essentially is f of f inverse becomes input itself like if we take the output of inverse of a function and we put input uh, in that function then it will become x it is saying this we will prove these things later on and other properties other things of the inverse function that we can deduce is domain and range gets swapped what it means is if f is like this it from go, going from a to b then f inverse will be like this uh, starting from b to a domain and uh, range we cannot say exactly range we can say codomain range also gets swapped range is basically the actual output we can say codomain or range both gets swapped so if f is a function like this uh, from a to b then f inverse will be from b to a next f inverse is always unique what it means there won't be will not be duplicate or two f inverse means there will always be only one f inverse of a function if we have f as function then f inverse when we calculate there won't be any confusion that we have got two different functions uh, and then which one will be the inverse f inverse is always unique i will show this by an example just later on uh, let's take an example whatever we learn right now let's take an example then we will understand what it is trying to say example let's say we have fx equal to x squared plus 3 see it's very basic example but still uh, we will post mortem this example so that we understand what inverse actually means so how do we calculate inverse first we say like this let's say y equal to x squared plus 3 and we try to calculate x in terms of y of y how do we do that for how we can do like this just subtract three both side we will get like this then x will become plus minus under root y minus 3 so inverse will become let's say g g x will become replace this y by x we will get plus minus x minus 3 but sorry but i just told you that inverse is unique but we got here two functions plus uh, under root to x minus 3 and minus under root x minus 3 and then which one will be the inverse so why we got this first exam in this our function was x square plus 3 this function is no 1 1 in all r this is not one word since at minus 1 also we, we will get 4 and at 1 also we will get 4 so this is not 1 1 so for this we have to put some domain restriction to make this function 1 1 i just told you that to, to uh, inverse will exist only when the function is both 1 1 and 1 2 so to first we have to make this function 1 1 and 1 2 then we can say uh, exactly what will be the inverse so this function x square plus 3 is 1 1 in 
two uh, segment of domain. First is when x is greater than or equal to zero. At second is x is less than or equal to zero, like this. For when x is greater than greater than or equal to zero, we will get g x. Uh, it's inverse g x. That is f inverse g x equal to under root x minus three. This one. And when when x is less than or equal to zero, we will get f inverse as g x equal to minus under root x minus three, like this. Now this is unique inverse, and we we could find that by putting some restriction on the domain. So in this uh, segment of the domain, this function is one 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 two. So inverse is this. In this segment of the of of the domain, this function is again one 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 two, and the inverse is this like this. Now I hope you understood uh, what it means. For function to be one 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 two and bijective, to make it uh, unique uh, inverse of that function. Okay. So here also we saw one another thing that I just uh, did not explain properly. How to calculate inverse? How to calculate inverse? What we do is a step one. Write y equal to f x to calculate x in terms of y three. Exchange x and y for right f inverse x as function of x like this. This is this is how we calculate the inverse of any function. First we write like this, and then we calculate x in terms of y. Then we exchange the x and y so that it becomes a function of x, and that function of x becomes f inverse x. Okay. Now, uh, till now, whatever we have uh, covered, we covered uh, like uh, we have completed this function of single variable, single variable. We will see practice problem now. so it was it was all about uh, inverse function so we have here we have completed a function of single variable in the next video we will see only practice problems on all the topics that we cover covered in last uh, 3 video lessons so see you in next uh, video lecture thank you everyone happy learning